Welcome everyone. Thank you for your time. Super excited to be here uh, for the first meeting of 2024. And today actually we have a very, 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 very awesome agenda because we're going to be focusing mainly on two points. Uh, as always, we'll start doing the community stats. We always like to basically show you a few numbers on how GitHub is behaving, how uh, this Slack like, super channel is going along. So we'll go over those and the contributions as well. Then we have Liu Bob from InDrive. She's a senior data steward from the data governance team and the data observability team. And she is actually going to explain us how they are using open metadata in your organization. I've seen these slides already. They are awesome. They have very cool usages. So I hope that you also enjoy that part. If you have also any questions for her, we are going to have some minutes, uh, minutes at the end. Otherwise, you can find her and the rest of the, of the team in Slack as well. And the other interesting topic that we have for today is how we are breaking in into the Gen AI world from Collate. So it's not only this cute cat thinking that we are all super excited and really looking forward into showing you what we are building now and the rest of the roadmap that we have already been envisioning. That being said, let's start showing some numbers. So we always get super happy when the open source developer grow. Since the last meeting in December, we have 16 more people that have been contributing PRs into the project up until the 220. The numbers, number of stars is continuously growing. It's up to the roof, more than 3,500 with more than 350 new starts since the last community meeting. If some of those that uh, are here, you have not yet started the project, please do. This really helps us spread the word and gain visibility onto the awesome job that this community is doing. In terms of Slack, we are very close to the 5,000 members. If you have questions about the project via to request, just want to get some support for your uh, POCs, for your product deployments or whatnot, we have support channel in there. We are always happy to go and help you as well as the rest of the community. It's awesome when you raise also your voice and help the fellow people that we have there. And finally, numbers in Twitter and numbers in the meetup group, we have just past the 2100. So if you don't want to miss any announcements, if you don't want to miss any future community events that we do, please make sure that you are following the open metadata page in there as well. 12 new community contributors. Again, super happy to see you here. I know that some of you are first time contributors and others are already pros like Christian. So please don't be shy. If you see something that you're like, hey, I have a nice weekend ahead of me. I, I know how to get my hands dirty with Python, with Java, with TypeScript, or you just want to get started in your open source journey. We are happy to help. We have some good first issues in GitHub that you can go and you can follow. So please don't be shy. We are more than happy to see all of you pitching in to help us get open metadata into the next level. One of the contributions that we would like to highlight this month is the SaaS connector from Xi'an. So thanks a lot for taking the time into building these awesome connectors. We try to build as much as possible, right? I think that we are between 70 and 40 already, but there is always yet another service. So if you are burst with that technology and you want to make sure that the rest of the community can also benefit from this kind of connectivity between those source systems and open metadata. We have videos, we have guides to help you start it. And if you need our help, just raise your hand in the community. We are more than happy to assist you. So thanks again, Xu Yang, for this SAS Villa connector. In terms of metrics, as you can see, we had Christmas, right? We had Christmas in the PRs and we had Christmas in the super questions, but we are now back in track January 2024 in an average of 75-ish number of PRs that we are merging every week and around 100 of questions, again, every week from the community. In any case, also happy for those of you that were also giving us company during the Christmas, during your holidays into the support channel. 
Any questions that you have, we are there to assist you. And now I'm just going to pass the word and pass the screen into Leo Bob. Thank you for taking the time to present here. The floor is all yours. Uh, hello and welcome. Thank you everyone for your presence. We are delighted to have you on. I'm sure the expectations are high and I hope not to disappoint. My goal is to provide you with valuable insights and engage in meaningful discussion about the case of using open metadata in and drive. My name is Lvov Pasichnik and I'm pleased to meet everyone today. I have been working as a data steward for five years already, and I'm passionate about leveraging my knowledge uh, to contribute to efficient and ethical use of data within organizations, recognizing the crucial role that effective data governance plays in achieving business goals. Let me introduce our company. We are the second most downloaded Red Hat application, and um, I would like to say that Drive provides an expanding list of uh, urban services, including intercity transportation, uh, freight delivery, and etc. I hope you had a chance to be our client. Um, I'm a part of data observability team. This team is not just a garden of data. They are architects of reliability, custodians of quality, and champions of data-centric culture. Uh, today, I will cover several aspects like uh, why did we choose open metadata? How does open metadata help us with our pain points? Um, how we manage deployment and what features do we value the most? Um, but let me start with a couple of words about our architecture. In the very beginning of the company, we had a monolith database, but when we started to grow exponentially, I mean, more and more data started to come from different sources, from different locations, then we understood that it's high time we switched to microservice architecture. It helped us to raise data locality, and in that moment, we faced the challenge to track all services because we have more than 100 uh, databases in AWS. Regarding our pain point, I would like to mention that in, in Drive, um, we have uh, such aspects like that our data is distributed and diverse across different departments uh, and services and DBH layers. So it's crucial for us to have a tool with a powerful advanced search, detailed data lineage and the integrated business uh, glossary model. Let me explain uh, how we deal with them in more de details. I would like to ask you my favorite question. How not to turn a data lake into a swamp? I mean that it's crucial to always have in mind this question when it comes to building your IT landscape, scaling your business processes, uh, and choosing new software. Definitely the first step in any data-driven uh, digital transformation is to start managing your data as an enterprise asset. What does it mean? I mean to take inventory of it, assess it, and maximize its value, providing transparency and credibility. When we embarked on our journey of enhancing our metadata management, we were looking for a solution that not only offered robust features, but also aligned with our commitment to open source technologies. Open metadata provided us flexibility that we needed to, to customize and integrate seamlessly with our existing IT infrastructure. The vibrant community and the continuous development were additional factors that influenced our decision. Um, I would like to start describing our journey by mentioning some important points in the deployment process. Basically, we have a team uh, of uh, DevOps, data engineers, and stewards working together. Uh, we reckon that it's crucial to document uh, the deployment process, use these cases uh, in order to reproduce it when it uh, uh, comes to updating uh, to a newer version uh, with a less amount of efforts. Uh, because definitely we are ambassadors of documentation. We are data stewards. Uh, we have three instances of open metadata. I mean, one is for broad and the others are for testing. Uh, talking about some difficulties we face in the deployment process, I would like to focus on the following. Uh, we have uh, our internal in-drive data quality libraries for incident management. 
Uh, for example, uh, if uh, there's uh, an ingestion failure, uh, information about it can be found only uh, manually in uh, a flow of metadata. We would like to have a solution, uh, sorry, uh, to have a solution, I mean the library that uh, would automatically send the alerts to uh, page of duty. Uh, the stack uh, is presented uh, uh, in the slide, you can see it. Uh, okay. Now let's dive into our use cases and start with lineage. Understanding how data flows from different uh, system, how it comes from uh, different layers, uh, and how changes to one data set may impact others, it's often complex and time consuming. You know, uh, lineage is here to help and to cooperate. it. We have different scenarios where it can be useful. Uh, for instance, our BI team asked us to provide a lineage from sources to Tableau dashboards. And um, at the screenshot, you can see the example. Um, you can see how data comes through different layers to dashboard. Talking about our achievements, I would like uh, to mention that uh, we use custom scripts to parse uh, lineage from DBT, raw scale code base, uh, BigQuery, scheduled query. Um, and uh, Tableau to build a single point of truth. We would like to say thank you to Open Metadata Support Team uh, for contributing and supporting the SQL Lineage Python library, uh, which really makes it easy to collect uh, lineage data from raw SQL. Uh, it's important to continuously enrich your metadata, except uh, classic setting of uh, metadata ingestion from services, I mean, we did some enhancement. We marked up uh, the tables and columns um, with the use of self-written taxonomy user. And also we marked up personal data uh, based uh, on the coincidence uh, of two or more entities inside the table. What does it mean? For example, you have a table with uh, columns uh, which contains um, email or maybe passport ID. And um, together, uh, this table should be marked or maybe tagged as a personal data validate. You can see it on the screenshot. We have such tag. Uh, and um, it means that this uh, table contains personal data. It can be very useful uh, maybe when it comes to provide some access and etc. Uh, and also we plan to automate the process of testing new versions. What does it mean? Uh, now we do it mostly manually, but we got an advice from Open, open Metadata uh, support team to use a tool uh, uh, service. It's just a suggestion. Uh, we will be glad uh, to hear other best practices uh, from you, how to test new versions. Um, so do not hesitate to write them uh, and share your experience in the chat. Um, okay. The third topic is uh, metric and uh, product uh, event glossary. Uh, basically, glossary is a tool which promotes alignment by ensuring that technical terms are explained in a business-friendly language and vice versa. You can use glossary with uh, different uh, scenarios. For instance, when it comes to uh, onboarding. I, I reckon that everybody knows that it can be difficult to discover a huge amount of specific terms uh, and metrics that are used in the company. Uh, it can be hundreds and thousands, maybe depends on the scale. And also we use glossary as a single source of truth for metric calculations and formulas. Uh, so everybody can open the relevant card and see how metric is calculated and where it's stored. And um, for example, um, use it without uh, any duplication. Uh, talking about concrete example, I would like to tell a little bit about uh, uh, our use case of ESG reporting. ESG is a non-financial reporting, so we need to provide uh, all metrics and the way how they are calculated uh, to our auditors. Glossary is here to help us. As you can see a screenshot, you can find almost everything, formula, uh, script, uh, synonyms, uh, useful links to external resources, uh, some kind of text, uh, who is an owner, who is a reviewer. And also you can see a status, for instance, uh, approved, which means that uh, this uh, information is up to date and you can use it in your reporting or maybe uh, when you provide this information to auditors. 
Uh, also, based on my experience, I would like to mention that the uh, connection of business and technical metadata can be one of the advantages of business glossary. So now we are very interested to find the best solutions how to link a metric uh, with a table or dashboard where it is calculated or stored. Because you can just click on the name of the table. Uh, I mean, uh, here you can see that we are in the cart of the glossary term. Then we switch to assets uh, tab. And then we, we can find uh, some assets in our data catalog um, that we are connected uh, that are connected to our metric so click it on the name of the table you can uh, dive into it and then uh, see uh, the full lineage so uh, you can get a clear understanding of how this metric was calculated it can be very crucial when it comes for instance for IPO requirements I mean to have a transparent lineage for key metrics uh, we decided to use uh, such a way like uh, putting a comment with FQN. I, I mean, every every single glossary term have uh, has it on FQN, and we decided to put it as a comment in the formula in the tableau in cal in calculated field, and also as a tag in the, uh, in the column of a DBT model. But uh, we are not pretty sure that it's the best solution, so. If you also face with uh, such problem, uh, or not just a problem, it's like a task, how to link uh, technical metadata, I mean, tables and uh, uh, dashboards uh, with um, the card of, um, of a glossary term. So also well, let's discuss it and uh, please share this, uh, share your experience in, in, in the chat if you want. Uh, okay. And uh, also, uh, we are very interested in using uh, glossary approval workflow. It helps us to get an approve uh, from different uh, stakeholders. Uh, for instance, uh, all key metrics uh, which are used in uh, uh, IPO reports or maybe in ESG reports uh, should be uh, should be reviewed. So internal uh, function functionality like uh, glossary approval flow is quite uh, important to be used. Uh, so uh, let's uh, conclude and go to maybe some kind of uh, discussion. Uh, generally, now um, talking about uh, lineage, I also would like to mention that uh, we uh, would like to start uh, at some uh, services uh, and uh, some ETL and uh, lineage, which is uh, connected to streaming data. So we would like to have a ETL Kafka uh, parser for streaming data. And uh, also talking about uh, my previous uh, topic, uh, we are interested in automation of uh, linking terms. Uh, I mean, connection between business and technical metadata. And uh, we we are waiting for. Uh, some improvements and enhancements uh, in glossary approval workflow. We have created some uh, future requests, and um, uh, if uh, I'm right, uh, or uh, maybe uh, Open Metadata uh, support team can uh, add some information. Uh, as, a, as I remember, it will be implemented in the next versions, uh, both uh, about uh, streaming data and uh, both uh, about uh, those approval workflow and definitely we value uh, such library uh, so i suppose <laughs> i tried to, to be uh, not so long and make my uh, presentation quite laconic so i can make some um, pauses and uh, we can decide uh, uh, which topic is better to uh, discuss but uh, i would like to focus on uh, this kind uh, of uh, topic i mean uh, metric and product event glossary also we have uh, i would like maybe to add uh, that we have a future 
different uh, we, we have different structures of uh, glossaries for instance uh, we have different uh, business verticals and uh, we can uh, create a glossary for each um, each request for instance we have um, bi team and product analytics team and uh, for them we created their own um, uh, glossary also we have uh, a lot of uh, different kind of product events and uh, because it's a specific glossary object we created uh, a separate uh, glossary for them and uh, case by case uh, we start to add uh, new uh, types of glossary and then Obviously, we write some documentation how to uh, create uh, and how to uh, scale your glossary. Because it's crucial to not only provide the functionality, but also to uh, create a process. Uh, and uh, this process definitely should be suitable for, uh, for stakeholders and for requirements. Uh, yes. I suppose it's a high time uh, for our questions and maybe we will start a discussion about some ideas, how it's, it's better to um, connect business and technical metadata, uh, or maybe uh, uh, some uh, ideas how to test new versions. These are uh, key questions that can be found fr from us. Awesome. Thanks a lot for the presentation. I think definitely useful. It's always very, very interesting when we see how different organizations with very different needs, they just try to, let's say, organize and make sense of the different features in the lineage and glossary and whatnot. I do think that this challenge that you're facing about how can we directly link some of the metadata that we might have in Tableau, that we might have in BigQuery directly with the glossary terms that we have in open metadata can be a, an awesome discussion. So if some of you here have already had like some thoughts or have some alternatives aside from adding these FQN comments directly into the Tableau fields and you would like to share that, I would say, please feel free to add any suggestions uh, in Slack. As always, you can, uh, sorry, I, I meant in the chat as always, you can uh, continue the discussion both with us and with uh, Leo Bob in in Slack as well, and we'll try to also keep some minutes at the end in case that you need to basically think a bit uh, about these topics and maybe you have uh, some suggestions by the end of the meeting. We'll save a few minutes there. So thanks a lot, Leo Bob, for the presentation. Really, really appreciate it. And folks, don't be shy share your thoughts and help us all make a bit of more sense of all of these pieces uh, that we can connect here into open metadata then let's jump into the next topic for today which is what we have been building during the release 1.3 that we are very excited to get out not in 1.3 in the next release Right, but before going into that, let's go a bit down the memory lane, right? Because in the end, open metadata was born because working with data is hard, right? Whenever you get onboarded into a new team, into a new company, you need to make sense of a lot of information, right? And sometimes the difficulties, they do not only come from the data itself, but they actually come from the complexity and the architectures of the platform, right? This is just one random image that they took from Google about the different tools that we had out there in verticals, such as infrastructure analytics and whatnot, only on 2021. And usually these numbers just keep growing and growing, right? So you land into a new job, you need to make sense of all of these, all of this information and you just try to navigate where do the pipelines live, where different dashboard services are different uh, teams using, how many teams are building and hosting their own data, right? Because up until today, what we try to do is every new problem that we had with data, we just threw 
uh, a new a new tool into it, right? So you need to swim across conference pages, Notion docs, old Slack threads, just to understand everything that is going on into your company's data platform. And I'm not sure if you already played with this Pokemon or big data, but I think that it's a very nice representation of what issues we are actually having uh, here with uh, data platforms, because you just need to guess random names. Is it a Pokemon or is it a big data tool? We'll put that on the slides in case that you want to have uh, some fun or you want to add it into your hiring pipeline. That's completely up to you. But the point here is that if you ask a car dealer what's in their stock, they will know exactly the number of cars, the colors, the specs, the brands, everything, right? They just have all of that information so internalized that there is no room for, uh, for error. But you ask a similar question to a data practitioner, like, okay, how many tables do we have for what's our most important table? And there's easily very blurry lines that get drawn very quickly. It depends on who you ask. It depends on uh, what kind of persona, what is the role in the company, right? So these, that should be a very simple question to ask. What are the ingredients that we work with as data practitioners? This simple question becomes very, very hard uh, to answer. Because the scenario that we have nowadays into the data platforms is that we have a set of tools, a set of sources of information, but those sources of information, they are needed, right? That's out of the question. We need transactional databases for web pages and mobile applications. Then we need data lakes, data warehouse, ETL tools, just to make sense of all of these analytics pipelines to actually try to extract some of meaningful information about the data. We need to handle metrics for our OKRs. We need to track these metrics in dashboards. Then we have the world of data scientist team with their notebooks, their ML models, and whatnot. And the problem is that these tools, they don't really talk into each other. So you jump into the data platform and your ABC, let's imagine that you are trying to build a dashboard, you're trying to build a pipeline, whatever it is that you are trying to do. Your first step is make sense of what data do we have? Which tables can I use? What do they mean? Are they actually giving me the kind of information that I need. So this first step of discovering and exploring the data is our first need and data practitioners. And this has been solved by putting on top of the table a data catalog. But in the end, like shopping for data is like shopping for a couch, right? You not get the first one that you find. You need to make sure that you can trust the contents of the data before moving forward. So that's your tool number two. Again, we add it into our platform. Then you need to actually be sure, okay, I'm building this dashboard, I'm building this pipeline. I need to know if this fails at some point, I need some alerts, I need to make sure that everything is refreshing at the expected rate. Tool number three, observability. Then there's GDPR and a lot of compliance issues and fines coming on nowadays. So that's just tool number four for compliance. And we can keep jumping as users from tool to tool, which they are giving just fragmented information, duplicated information. Maybe I have some tables registered in my catalog. These tables are not in my quality tool. These tables are not in my observability tool. And this just keeps growing the frustration of the users that are trying to do their job. Their job is not making sense of all of this mess. Their job is to build ML models, build dashboards, build pipelines, and make sure that they don't break, right? So we are trying to convert these data cows into data insights. And the way of doing that is let's integrate all of this information that we have from all of these sources. Let's bring all of that together into a centralized and shared metadata platform. Because in the end, it does not matter if a table comes from a transactional database, it comes from a data lake, it comes from a data warehouse. It's a table. It should answer a specific set of questions. It should have a specific set of properties. So let's make sure that we are integrating all of these diverse origins of data into the same place so that all of these different questions, all of these ABCs of our daily life can be answered on top of the same platform. We don't want users to have to jump from tool to tool, learn three uh, different UIs and experience and connectors and whatnot. You connect all of this information in one place. 
you discover your data, you create your tests, run your profiles, create your alerts, own all of that information with your business, add the roles, add the domains, everything that you need can happen with open metadata on the same place. And that's why we say that here in the open metadata community, we are building a unified platform for discovery, observability, and governance, right? And that's actually a bold statement, and it's not something easy to do because we're saying we not only need to integrate all of this information, we need to build all of these applications. So how come can we go from needing four different tools into needing just one? And the answer are the foundations of the, pro uh, of the project, the vision that we had as a community of saying, okay, let's build together with the feedback of our users, with the feedback of our community, a metadata schema. Let's create this language where we can actually make sense of all the information that there's out there in the data platform, and we just don't have the tools yet to exploit it, right? Once we have the schema, once we have this common language that we can use to understand each other, to exchange all of this information, then we can stop building everything from scratch because I know what the table means. I know how a user interacts with the table. I know where this table belongs. I know how I can relate the downstream and downstream lineages with other assets, right? And all of this comes thanks to this metadata schema that it's just defining everything that we have on the platform. But that's not the end of it because we have the language and we have the APIs, the core of the open metadata platform that help us work and play and exploit with this metadata. And these APIs, they are everywhere. We use the APIs to get the information from the source systems and send it to open metadata. And we use the APIs to build all of these different applications, which gives us a very big flexibility as a platform because you can go on the UI, keep creating tests, click, 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 next, you have a test, you have an alert. If you don't know how to code, you can still crowdsource and add all of uh, your knowledge into the platform. But maybe you're an engineer and you want to automate some of your processes. Maybe you want to add the metadata from an ML model directly embedded into a CI CD pipeline. Let's do that. Let's use these APIs to enrich and exploit all of this metadata based on this metadata schema. And this is super important because it has allowed us to build very quickly so many and so unique features that allow users to explore and discover the metadata, that allow users to use our in-house built data quality observability and alerting module to make sure that they can create and they can maintain high quality data assets. It has helped us build this data insights module where you can actually keep track of the health and the evolution of everything that's going on into your data platform, right? You know that today you have 20% of description coverage, but that's important, right? You want your top tier, your most important data assets to be properly defined with descriptions because the rest of the people can come and can use them properly. So let's use these KPIs to mark these goals, nudge the teams and follow the thread just to make sure that you are reaching your goals of your governance initiatives. We have also integrated the data mesh world into open metadata with domains and data products so that each team can focus in the information that they feel relevant and they can properly share and define what are the pillars, what is the kind of data that other teams can use uh, to get more information and gather more insights out for the business. We have also added the possibility of building and defining all of your business language in the glossary to properly govern and manage your data. And even for those of you that are using Collate, we have this knowledge center so that you can just completely reach Confluence and you can create the guides, the how-tos, all of the information related to the data, it should happen as close to the data as possible. So we have been able to build all of that thanks to these two big pillars, the metadata schema and the metadata APIs. But there is just so much more that we can do, right? Some people say, hey, can we actually get the descriptions propagated via lineage? Can we auto-tag? tables based on specific rules. Can we do 
yes, we can do a lot of things. Everything that we have been building here, sometimes they say this is the necessary evil, right? We have been putting all the time into defining these schemas and these processes and tasks and defining the way that we can bring all of the metadata into the platform and all the people into the platform so that we can start building the cool things on top of that, right? And this is exactly where we are now. And we are in a very unique position because open metadata is the only platform out there that really embraces collaboration around the metadata, right? As a user, you can go, you can request to update a description, you can request to update a tag, you can open tasks for the owners of the information uh, of the assets just to improve that information. Now in 1.3, we are uh, improving our incident manager, right? So whenever a test fails, you can go and you can ask uh, the owner of the table, hey, this needs to be fixed. Who is going to be taking care of that? So all of the life cycle of the assets can happen and can be discussed directly next to the data. So that's one of the key points. Another very important part is that we have all the context. We know everything that's going on into your platform, right? Because we're integrating all of your sources. We're integrating all of your language. So we do know how the information flows. We know the schemas. We know the descriptions. We know what's covered, what's not covered. We know how re that relates to the, to the different elements in your business. And finally, we have, again, these schemas and these APIs that allow us to share this information and exploit it. And taking that into consideration, we are now leaving the era of the adoption of Gen AI. Right, and this, uh, I, I took this picture from Sequoia, uh, from Sequoia Capital, and it's like, okay, it's not yet as scary as the one that we were showing before of the data tools, but we see that in very little time, we already have a lot of companies and a lot of models that help us generate text, video, image, code, speech, and whatnot, right? I mean, just 10 years before, we were forging signatures by hand, and today we can create deep fakes of presidents just singing songs, right? But in all of this change, in all of this evolution of AI, there is a still one truth that holds there, and it's not 42. This truth is that garbage in, garbage out, right? It doesn't matter how many GPUs you buy to NVIDIA. You need great data in order to create great models and in order to get the proper results from those models. And that's where open metadata and collate gets back into the picture, right? Because we have this context, we have these schemas, and with the power of the API, we can go, we can connect, we can interact with external tools to make your life easier, to make sure that we can automate the body, to make sure that we can automate the heart so that you can focus on what is actually going to deliver value into your business. If you remember, if you were here on the community meeting that we had, uh, that was not in December, but for the one that we were actually talking about the one that to release, we explained that, okay, we were super happy to announce the applications framework, right? And our approach to application are just processes and automations that allow you to extend open metadata. And when we were presenting this application framework, we said, okay, we actually moved the data insights as an application because that makes sense, right? This application is going to roll all of the metadata uh, that you have into the platform and give you all of these insights. Then we want to use these results to gather reports and match the rest of the teams and say, hey, we might not be able to get to our goals if we follow this rhythm, as well as how can we make sense and how can we update all of these searching and indexing capabilities on the platform, right? So all of those are applications. And what we want to present you today is one application that we are super excited to already uh, be working on it to get out for Collate into the release 1.4, which is the Metapilot. And the only goal of this application is to automate and create better metadata so that you can have an easier daily life. Right, Metapilot is going to be a Gen AI companion that will integrate with this same collaboration experience that we have built with this same process of 
hey, I come here and I get this description, I get this suggestion, how can I improve all of this documentation that we have? Users already know how to do that. They are actually already following the same practices with the rest of the people in their teams. And we are going to add Metapilot in there just to make you even better, make you even faster. And in order to get all of this done, we are joining forces with the people at Y. This is also why we have Wanda here. Super happy to see you there. And if you don't know them yet, they are pros in the industry, right? Y has been founded by experts in data. They are experts in query engines. They are, they are contributors of Apache projects such as Hadoop, right? So they really know their ins and outs of data. They really know how to make sense of what is happening into the data platforms? How can we improve that? They felt those pains and they are there trying to build tools to make everyone's life easier. So what we are doing here, this is screenshot that you see here, is the first integration that we are bringing out with the Collate Metapilot and the Y Gen AI engines, where we are suggesting descriptions automatically for all of your data assets in minutes. Because in the end, Ingesting the metadata, that's fine, right? We know how to do that. You go to the services page, you click next, you register your service, you get the metadata in. That's the easy part, but how you maintain it, right? How you make sure that the quality is there when new tables keep coming in, when you keep onboarding uh, new, new projects and new teams into the platform. If you are a data steward and you need to document 10 tables, okay, that might be boring, but you do it. Then you need to document 100 tables that moves from boring to painful. And then if you need to document 1,000 tables, that moves to painful to impossible, right? So we are here in Collate with Metapilot to help you through that. So let me give you a quick demo on how this is going to look like. I'm in my local. Again, we are polishing everything here. We just want to really give you an early view here. So hopefully, no demo aspects are going to, to get this messy. And as you can see, I'm also going to take the chance to show you some of the UI improvements that the team has been going through. So now if we click into settings, we have this great colorful view. And if I go into my applications, you see that I have here the Metapilot. Right? So if I click and I configure this Metapilot, I just need to specify which service do I want to create the description for and which database do I want to create the description for. In this case, I'm keeping it simple. I'm going to a single database for a single service, but let's imagine that you just onboarded a couple of new services or you have your most important database out there that just has really low bar description coverage. You come here, you configure the application, submit, this information into the Y engine, run it, and what you're going to see at the end is something like this. If I go into now my services view, I go into my databases, I have this Redshift instance here. This is the service name that I configured, the database that I configured. I can come here into my DBT shuffle, and as you can see, there's quite a few tables, and these customers looks important, description is not great. Let's see what Metapilot has for us. We can click here into the customers table and you can see that we have the Metapilot already there to help us. And I can come and I can say, look, there's a new description that has been generated by Metapilot. I didn't need to do anything. All of these tables, they just get the description in minutes for you. So I can come and I can say, hey, this table contains information about something. Looks like this is already better than the description that I have. Let's accept it. Next, let's move on. I'm the owner of the table. Let's make sure that I can actually get top-notch description so that the users of my data products can make the most sense of this information. Now I go into the customer ID, right? It says unique identifier for each customer. Maybe that's not what I'm looking for on this description. I kick it out, reject it and I move on. And this way, we can just go and see how the Metapilot makes our life 
way, way easier because I don't need to understand uh, all of this information and try to figure out, okay, yeah, no, can I really remember what these customers was about? Metapilot is there to help me make my job better, make my job faster so that I can focus on other important things and drive value into the business. But we are not going to stop there, right? This is just the first step into making sure that Collate can write this generative AI wagon uh, next to Y, right? Because as we were saying, we have this very big collaboration experience all around the platform, right? So we can very easily integrate all of this experience with generative AI as well, so that we can eventually say, hey, can you please update the documentation for this table? Can we ask Metapilot to let us know if this table contains PII data or not? And if it does, let's just give the tags. We can also ask Metapilot to create queries for us, right? Can, we can also ask Metapilot to fix some of the queries for us. So we want to have also this chat-like experience directly into the tool so that we can go and we can ask, hey, what is the total net, net profit from my sales data? And just get a query out that is conformant to the metadata of my tables that I can use already to get all of this information, all of this value out. And the same for the queries, right? We are already getting them from the usage pipelines and whatnot. And you can actually go and add new queries that you think that might be useful for the rest of your company. What happens if you go into a new table, try to understand it, you copy one of the queries from that list, you run it, it's not working. Let's ask Metapilot, hey, can you fix that, that query for me? Let's get the results, paste it into the database, and let's move on into our lives. So that's a bit the very fast showcase and roadmap that we have here for the Metapilot. I'm sure that you might have a ton of questions, so please don't hesitate to ask any questions about Liu Bob and InDriver uh, InDrive presentation or any other questions that you have uh, about Metapilot or about Wave, we are here to answer that. Yes, we can. Yeah, I'm uh, Vishak. So just one question that I did have is uh, uh, like mainly around the security of this feature, right? So I think one of the, the main things with generative AI is while, while our clients realize the importance of it, uh, the usefulness, security becomes a major concern, right? Uh, and that's where we'll check if like, you know, this this data gets stored within Collate or is it like, say you take the enterprise subscription, it stays locally within the, the uh, you know, the cloud service provider that you choose or is that something that's used to train like, you know, for the other Collates or other, like, you know, the AI models in general, right? So uh, in terms of what we are deployment wise, we have uh, this is available only in Collate SaaS right now. Uh, deployments have multiple options we have. We have on-prem deployments as well for the organization that is interested. In such cases, the data itself is kind of you know limited in between your organization and everything else. Secondly, this is our first step towards uh, you know Metapilot in terms of you know, integration with Y. Uh, irrespective of how organization approach, uh, most of the organization I have talking to open API, open, open AI rather, <laughs> open AI and having a kind of a uh, agreement between them to not to retain the data. That is their, you know, enterprise way of kind of doing it. So we can have, you know, if you are interested in more, more of these things and how we are going to do it, uh, feel free to reach us and we can give you some documents and everything else on this topic. Sure, sure, sure. Got it. Uh, it's just that a, a, a lot of uh, what I do is on uh, your, uh, my I'm just does yeah, just to touch base, sorry to interrupt, uh, but you know, what are we using? We're not using your actual data. We're using table names and column names, right? So essentially using that and the connections to, hey, this particular artist table is queried with uh, products table, right? So you're using that context. So essentially you are using the metadata, not actual data. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. Sure. But yeah, I'll uh, maybe reach out separately on Slack for further. How, how is that possible? That it does not accessing the data. Because I mean, if it has no the, the yeah. data in the column in order to summarize the description, doesn't yeah. it? We are not, so from open metadata perspective itself, except for sample data, which you can disable easily uh, from the profiler, we only collect metadata, and the metadata is the only one that we are using. Among the, if you want to go into a little more details on the technical side of the things, how we are using the database names, schema names, and table names, feel free to do it. Yeah. Um, so so that's right. So 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 maybe I can add uh, and and so add. Um, so add a bit more color to this. Uh, so first of all, I'm I'm very happy to work with the uh, Open Metadata team. They are the best. Um, so basically, you know, so for the data we use to generate these de descriptions, we use a table name, column name, uh, and you know, join information and stuff. Uh, uh, and so stuff like that. And if you want to, you know, do some additional, uh, for example, if you want to bring your sample data in, so like uh, Harsha mentioned, uh, this is purely optional, right? So if you have that, we can generate better description. Or this can also help to generate better query. But if you don't uh, want to send that, we can also you know, continue to generate this based on the name of these objects. Right. Given some of my table names, <laughs> I'd be really interested to see what AI came up with. <laughs> hey, uh, this is VJ. Uh, I just had a question about the models. Is it uh, in the roadmap to uh, for a user to uh, select their own models, open source models, apart from OpenAI. Yeah, if you have a self-hosted model, like company uh, companies can actually, you know, have their own LLMs and probably we could use that LLM instead of, you know, what open metadata uses. Yeah, so if you want to, um, you know, do your own, um, LLMs and suggest descriptions. We have APIs, so in that case, you will be doing all the things that we guys are doing. Uh, just to you know reiterate on something that uh, uh, that uh, Pere was talking about. You know, these guys are experts in uh, understanding the schema queries, um, and you know we are very happy to partner with them. So as far as Colette service is concerned, we'll be using way right because uh, they are the experts, and we'll use their whatever you know models that they are using underneath we'll use them as a service either as a you know surveys or a local deployment so that is how we are going about it in case in your case Vijay you, you can use any LLM models and then using our APIs you can suggest all these you know updated descriptions and stuff like that by yourself okay got it Essentially, what we have is an application, you know, that interacts with uh, Way, and then, you know, gets the information from Way, and then suggest, you know, provides it as suggestion. You need to just build it by yourself. Also, there is a, a question here asking about PII labeling, uh, but just to really make that super super clear for everyone, in the end, we just get the metadata right out of your system. Any kind of data quality checks and profiling queries or one and whatnot, we ship that to your databases. So those queries are running locally with your data and we gather the results. Right then in that case, you can also say, hey, do I want to get some sample data out of that? That's just five, uh, 50 random rows that we will pick up from your tables. And this actually helps also users kind of make sense of the data whenever they are exploring that. So. If you choose to bring uh, that sample data in, we can also use that sample data to try to apply some PII labels, right? In the end, there are two scenarios. Either a column is named credit card or first name or social security number, and that's already kind of giving us a hint. But maybe if, if your column names are completely weird because you're following X, Y, Z format or whatever, but while checking into the sample data, we are finding some emails. In that case, we will be able to also tag that as PII. But in the end, we will just use the information that you make available for us, making sure that the baseline is only the metadata, not only the names, are only the schemas. How much does uh, 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 MetaPilot be uh, open source? Yeah, obviously not the 
but not the service itself, but the, the interface between it. How much of it you know, is going to be published in the GitHub? So uh, this is collate only feature, which means it's uh, proprietary for now for the collate uh, customers. I think the goal of that, what we are trying to set from the very beginning of this demo, is to indicate like why we built open metadata based on schemas and APIs, right? That's the interaction. That's where we want to connect to various different sources. Now, if you, as I think several of you asked about, hey, I want to do my own LLM, that is the power of it. This is how we built it using our APIs. You can build the application frameworks that we are talking about earlier. That's a pluggable applications. You can build your own applications and put it into open metadata. For example, you want to build your own AI assistant tool using open metadata, metadata APIs and connect to your own LLM, you could do that today by yourself. And this is, again, we are giving value-added features to the Collate um, and showcasing you know, how you can actually build these applications on top of open metadata and why we built you know, in the first place the APIs and schemas. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, OK. I missed that part. Thank you. I think there were also one question that was pretty interesting that would be useful for other users. Uh, can Metapilot generate description in a different language than, than English? Rangda, that is a question for you. Okay, yeah. So basically, uh, currently we, we have a default language generation. But if you want to generate a different language, I, I don't think this is any problem. So um so so we will um so we can add API so um plates can use to generate uh, the description in different languages. Yeah, I, I think this is totally durable. Yeah, Wangda, we support eight to nine languages right now. I think we can pass that information on to you and then you can generate descriptions in that yeah. language. Yeah, that's it. We can support any language basically. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, uh, for your time. Uh, really, thank you for the attention there. Thanks, Wanda, for working with us and making Metapilot a reality. Thanks, Liu Bob, for the presentation. If you sleep also on this linking asset metadata from Tableau, BigQuery, and so on into open metadata, and you want to chip in with your experience, we can also continue that discussion in Slack just to make sure that we can keep fine tuning all of that experience. And in the end, if there is a quorum, we can even directly change the connectors just to make sure that we define also this standard way of picking these or that pieces of metadata, right? So thanks again. Super happy to have been here one more time. Let's continue chatting on Slack and see you at the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.